when you talk about economic development, one of the secrets, and I would say it's a secret not just for other tribes, but other communities in America, we all get very complacent. We um, choose to be comfortable. And then if we are on the cutting edge of whatever we're doing, others aspire to do that. And because of our complacency, we begin to lose ground. And in American Indian country or in any community, that is something economically you have to look at. Um, the tribe is considered to be the leading tribe, not only economically for lifting its people up, but as leaders in American Indian country throughout the country. They're on the cutting edge as far as not only leadership, but economic development. In American Indian country, it's those stories that they tell, the games they play, the dress they wear, the dances they do, and it holds them to who they are. And today, the Choctaw people are able to hold on to it very specifically because they have dollars to be able to reinvest it. It's the reality that they have the chance to hold on to their culture. I see them uh, continuing to, to dance and, and speak their language and have beautiful homes if they choose to, um, and opportunity, I just lots and lots of prosperity and opportunity. Um, with it comes a lot of challenges, and I see that they will be able to meet those challenges because they're building infrastructure within their communities that not only give you a better road or utilities, but um, the glue that's there when, when an individual member stumbles. I also see a great deal of responsibility for the future leadership. And um, it's going to be a lot of work because that responsibility has to be addressed on a daily basis. And uh, if they can find that leadership, do their homework, keep things moving forward and make wise decisions, they'll be very successful. And we're in the process of finishing a um, $750 million project on a resort development. It's the largest project of its kind in the world today. All of this has moved forward. We're now the fifth largest employer for the state of Mississippi. Uh, we employ over 2,000 people here at the government just to run the nation. Um, it's a young tribe, over 50 some percent are 16 years and younger, 62 percent are 62 years and older. Uh, the tribe currently is shifting. We just promoted a shift to technology economically in April. And we've been doing that since NAFTA started moving labor intensive jobs to Mexico. All of a sudden here at uh, Mississippi, Lots of people called our office and said, what are you doing? You're taking our jobs away. And we said, no, we're just changing them. So we've been changing those jobs to higher technology jobs. They're looking for higher margins. They're looking for uh, higher technology jobs. They're looking to compete globally. And they are doing that. And on the other end of the spectrum, um, if you're a young person and you're Mississippi Choctaw and you're receiving a high education, wow, you get this opportunity to come home and kind of look at a kaleidoscope of jobs. I don't know, for me, it, as an American Indian, it wasn't popular to be. Today it is. More successful, they're able to take those revenues and reinvest it into the opportunity to keep alive those cultural identifying markers that hold them and their heart to who they are. I asked him, I said, how, you know, how did you do this? How? He said, you know, Krita, I just was trained to be an electrician. In the Navy, he was an electrician. And he said, that's what I wanted to be. But there were no jobs. I mean, you know, Choctaws couldn't even get their hair cut here in town. Couldn't go to school here. There were no jobs. So he was going to move away and he got involved with some of his experiences overseas and whatnot to his people. And finally he said, lo and behold, my job began to be making jobs. So he was a creator of jobs and opportunity. And he is to even today. And people know that. They they trust him, not only his people, but the community and whatnot. 
I think um, programs that are just in a pilot process right now are um, educational academies, um, higher education. I think that that would be an enormous, wonderful attribute to the community. Um, I think that they need a stronger cultural institute. Uh, I think they're looking at that. Um, partly because other people want to learn who they are and uh, they haven't looked at that too seriously because they know who they are. Um, but I think that would be very important. I think it would be great to be able to not just catch up with uh, Silicon Valley and offer those kind of high-tech jobs, but to be further than that and hopefully with our Space Agreement Act with NASA and some of the um, geoimaging we're doing and whatnot, we will be beyond where, where technology is today because I think that's where it should be. 1990, infant mortality for this tribe was off the wall. Tuberculosis in Mississippi was horrible and for this tribe it was horrible. And that was in 1990. This is 2003. So 1990, things were horrible. The fact that they were even in Mississippi, an impoverished uh, location uh, in the United States made it even worse. But um, they were blessed in a way by being there because they were able to compete and pull themselves up because they knew what the problem was. Uh, right now, that uh life is uh, much better than let's say about 10 years ago that uh, before then the uh, Mississippi land of Choctaw ended we didn't have the opportunity at all it was it was no job and uh, this school this school was that um, <coughs> going up to 10th uh, grade. So, uh, of course, that back then, that uh, life was tough. Just like um, most of the Choctaw was a sharecropper or try to make it live in its own, own way. And you have, to, uh, have their own crops and what have you. But uh, we managed to get away with the uh, tribal leaders that are uh, trying to provide uh, better home, better education, better health. So it takes us a while to get to the point where we are now. So uh, of course, uh, uh, un unmet need is still on our list that uh, we have not accomplished yet and uh, that hopefully we're able to do it in, in the future. What when we very first started with uh, Chief Martins and council council people, they uh, trying to make, trying to bring the uh, factories, and uh, like uh, have to make a trip to Detroit and trying to get the uh, some kind of factory down here, you know, war harness assembly and, and what have you. But that wasn't an easy task, because like. Uh, at the beginning, we don't have the uh, facility to first start it, so that um, I, we managed to uh, develop the industrial park. And uh, still, that wasn't easy, but, like, uh, but we worked on it. The council, the chief worked on it, worked on it. Then I finally, that uh, we bring a war harness plant. It started small, so we eventually just getting bigger. And uh, right now we have uh, nine plants on reservation. Once we develop these factories coming into on the reservation, they, uh, the big, big companies you know, move their products to other country, like Mexico and other area that are a cheap labor. So uh, right now, uh, our factory is, um, we don't have that many people working. Uh, I'll say some more, but 
25, 30 people is still working in the factory. But we know that they'll be gone too. So uh, <clears throat> the chief, the council, we sit down and talk about it. It's just how we can bring the uh, uh, more factories in. But knowing that uh, factories, factories leave, leave in the United States. So we have to look for alternative. So uh, it so happened that we have an opportunity to bring a casino on the reservation. American Greeting Card is still here. We're, we're still operating that. But uh, uh, we have no timetable when this might be dis disappeared to other country too. But, uh, so uh, we got uh, in Gulfport area, uh, direct mail, that uh, junk mail that come to your mailbox, mail, that, all that stuff, that, that, that's what we do. <laughs> and uh, advertise it, we can develop any advertising that uh, the people want, the company want. And uh, we also uh, molding that uh, <clears throat> plastic spoon, plastic fork that you use at the McDonald's. That's what we do too. Try to provide the uh, job opportunity for anybody who wants to work. non endings and all alike. So, job is there. So <clears throat> we got we got right now we got nine thousand job permanent jobs. But, um, we bring the people all over the place. Three or four months ago, the plants shut down, and several of the plants shut down around around surrounding county. So they were lucky because uh, we had a job for them. So. Uh, Without, without uh, our success, without uh, Mississippi Band of Choctaw, Nashua County would have been red like dry peas. You know, it's, it's nothing there. The left is not going nowhere. So uh, <coughs> we put Nashua County on map, and uh, hopefully that uh, we continue with our uh, success. What we don't see is the uh, but we can feel that we don't see it as like nowadays that uh, <clears throat> people make more money. That people uh, have money to spend, you know. And uh, that uh, with the education, with the education that uh, we, we provide a scholarship, just so as you make a passing grade and continue making passing grade. You can pick your college anywhere in the United States and go and pr try to provide a scholarship. So that's an that's opportunity that I didn't have, a lot of Choctaw didn't have. Uh, <clears throat> so um, that's the uh, biggest thing. We have our own police department, fire department, our school, school system, and court system. So. Uh, some people may think that tribe tribes make money. Tribes got plenty of money. No, we make money, but we invest it. So uh, <clears throat> that uh, police department, the whole work we provide. Court system, law and order, we provide. Our school used to be uh, <clears throat> operated by a uh, bureau. Indian, Bureau of Indian Affairs, but uh, bureaus also dried up. So we have we get some money from bureau, but it's limited. So uh, <clears throat> I said three three quarter percent the tribe kicked in for school operation. So the, <clears throat> uh, we have built several of new school and. Uh, in our community, so uh, I feel good about it that I'm I'm part of it. That uh, where we at now? So hopefully uh, the tribe continue. Yeah. So with our culture, that 
you don't go to Walmart and buy material about Choctaw. You don't go in library and fi find Choctaw history. So uh, we, the, we the living Choctaw artists are the history, more like a way history book. Yeah. I think that what we're doing now, this, uh, this fair is going on, that, uh, that uh, what we're making history this, this week, that uh, we can continue to preserve.